Hello and welcome to Amigos Retro Gaming. In this part 2 of uh, tricking out the Amiga 2500, I'm going to be installing a Picasso 2 graphics card. So the next available slot there is a empty uh, Zorro 2 slot. So uh, just firmly press the card into place there. And uh, around the back of the uh, computer there on the left, uh, you'll see a VGA output and that's where we plug in the cable so uh, one end of the pass-through cable plugs into the output of the flicker fixer or uh, deinterlacer otherwise known as that's the A2320 and the other end the right hand end there I'm plugging in now is the uh, input into the Picasso 2 And the VGA cable from the monitor plugs into the top port there of the Picasso 2. So that's the output of the Picasso 2 to the VGA screen input. Okay, time to install the drivers. I've got the uh, disk one here with the Picasso 2 install disk. So I'll just go ahead with the uh, English install there. So I'll choose the intermediate user installation here. And uh, it's just asking, oh, it's just notifying me there that it's, it's going to need my permission really to change any files any operating system related files like the um, startup sequence and this part here I actually cut about um, four minutes out of the process there just to save some time and it's asking where to install the software to So that, that part I cut out was the decompression of the files from the floppy disk and I think it's just putting it all onto memory because the rest of the installation procedure seems to be quite a bit quicker. It's telling me now that it's going to install the um, monitor files in the workbench startup folder and telling me that it's going to manipulate the startup sequence and installing the change screen and the sticks blank software. The sticks blank software is just a screensaver. And the change screen is a piece of software that will allow um, other programs, for instance, uh, I have a word processing program that when you have, say, the Picasso running at 800 by 600 resolution and you run the word processor it switches the resolution back to the standard workbench res and the change screen software just allows you to tell the uh, system that you want to run the word processor at uh, a specific resolution that supports the Picasso 2 so um, I can demonstrate that later on okay I'm still installing bits and pieces here. It's asking me if uh, I want to develop my own programs for the Picasso 2. We could install uh, appropriate programs there. So might as well just do that. I'll speed things up a bit here. So the um, uh, th these videos are really just to show the installation procedures, not really delve too much into um, the workings of these different cards and whatnot but just a brief overview okay reboot not necessary it's all complete it's pretty handy so now it's just a matter of uh, trying some of these different resolutions here
try screen modes and the preferences there. So let's try 800 by 600. And you'll see the uh, screen flicker a bit. And um, you can actually hear the card click. It's like a relay clicking inside the card as it um, selects the appropriate resolution. Yeah. So here we go, uh, setting up the screen here so it fits properly. Uh, some of the old old schoolers watching this will remember having to do this with the CRT screen. Every time you change your resolution or your refresh rate, you have to go in and set your um, vertical and horizontal positions and uh, stretch out the horizontal and vertical and there's all sorts of other settings in here like pin cushion and trapezoid and uh, yeah all sorts of goodies to get your screen all lined up there and as soon as you go and change your resolution of course you have to go through all that again it doesn't necessarily remember it so not unless you had a very fancy screen which could remember the different resolutions we take it all for granted now with LCDs, everything just fits perfectly uh, into all, to fill the screen perfectly. So it's amazing how far we've come. So this is uh, yeah, 1024 by 768. It looks quite flickery on through the camera, but actually uh, viewing it on the actual uh, CRT screen didn't look too bad and um, then I think I got a little bit more adventurous and went for the 1280 by 1024 uh, was just about illegible on that uh, that screen I think that's this is a 17 inch um, CRT screen so almost getting to the point where I couldn't actually read some of this it looks quite bad here through the camera but um, didn't quite look as bad as that but still wouldn't be easy to use like that and um, I found that the 800 by 600 was about right for that size screen could probably go a little bit higher but it seems to be um, quite a nice resolution for this screen Okay, I've got some of the sound on here now, so you can actually hear this card when it flicks in and out of its uh, different modes. And you'll be able to hear in the background the uh, sound of that lovely fan <laughs> in the power supply of the A2500. We're in the way there, it's quite noisy. at hand with the uh, bomb stra <laughs> strapped to his back. <laughs> we certainly do take it for granted uh, how fast things are to load, how fast the pictures are to um, appear on your screen these days. And you see the redraw rate of these pre-rendered um, images. So we've got the family there, the king and the queen, and the, uh, the, the two baby pawns there with the grey and the, the one little offshoot there, the baby pawn who uh, doesn't quite look like either of mum or dad. Here. I'm looking forward to putting in the uh, accelerator card in the 
this machine. Mercedes. Yeah. Pretty good for the time. Pretty nice images. Uh, you know, as I say, we, we take it for granted these days, but um, you know, back back in the day, they were amazing images, really, to see on a computer screen. And that was one of the first things that really got me in the, into the Amiga. Was walking past the shop in Christchurch and. And uh, I saw an Amiga in the window displaying almost photorealistic images, and it, for the time it was just amazing. Uh, I still had my Spectrum, six, uh, 48k Spectrum at the time, and if you compare the two, that just pulls apart. So um, uh, I think that was a selling point for uh, the Amiga for me, that's for sure. And of course, the games that came with it, uh, fondly remember playing Gods and um, Stunt Car Racer, were some of our favourites, Speedball 2, and uh, lots, of, lots of fun uh, playing on the couch with mates and, and um, yeah, play, even just playing Hot Seat, have a life each, and uh, we'll see who can get the highest score, it's great fun. And there we go, uh, Picasso 2 installed. Uh, keep an eye out for the next uh, part in the series. And thank you very much for watching.